Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. The most I'm going to stop the flowing of the people going into that country, read. Jeremiah chapter 51, uh, the end of verse 44. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Verse 45. My people, go ye out out of the midst. Hold up, read that again. My people, go ye out of the midst. I think, I think within this chapter, he said, please get out of around three, four times. Right? Read. My people, go ye out of the midst of her. And deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Most High Ahia. And let your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor. And why was the rumors of wars? You hear about it, and because it's not happening, you think it's not going to happen. Read. Verse 46. Uh, end of verse 46. And violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Verse 47. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon. And her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, shall sing for Babylon. For the spoiler shall come up unto her from the north, saith the Most High Ahia. As Babylon hath called the slain of Israel to fall, so as Babylon shall call the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still. Remember the Most High Ahia afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. This is to this clear. Ye that have escaped the sword, that means you escape the destruction that is coming to Babylon, go away and stand not still. So when you leave, remember the power or the God, a higher, a far off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. Because that looking forward, not looking back. Now let Jerusalem come into your mind. She's finished. Right? Read. Verse 51. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame has covered our faces, for strangers are coming to the sanctuary of the Lord's house. Strangers have destroyed us. Strangers have destroyed our sanctuary, our belief. The un- they destroy our understanding so that we cannot connect to our God. They've given us their God, Baal, Baal, Satan, the dragon, Moloch. These are the gods we've been worshiping ignorantly. Jesus. Okay, we ain't know nobody named Jesus. Total madness. And then when we wake up and understand these things, we say, well, hold up. I'm a stranger here. You dragged me here. And the most high starts reviving us. They be like, okay, we have one who's the extremist. You are terrorist. Read on. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 52. Wherefore, behold, the days come, said the most high of that I will do judgment upon her graven images. So destroy all your images and your idols. And, and, and man, if you look at, if you even look at Washington, D.C., it's, it's idol after idol, monument of idols, oblix, which is man's personal member. That's what uh, oblix is. What's that, the Washington monument? Idols everywhere. Five pointed stars every place. But what if some did not believe? So what if you don't believe what we're teaching you? Paul asked, So what if some did not believe? Shall your unbelief make the faith of God without effect? You mean the most high is going to stop his own program because you don't believe them? No, you're dead. That's what you are. Okay, he has, his program was before us. And it will be well after us. And that's, that's for the people that's walking out there. They want to say it all the time. There have always been these situations. Every few years this happens. Nothing is going to change. That's a dead man.
Shabbat Shalom, Barakatham, Wa Peaceful Sabbath, bless you all. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Friday Night Sabbath coming out of Babylon here for the Gathering of Christ Church. I'm your host, brother and elder Ramar Karab. It is 7.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. The date is June 28, 2019. Hope you brothers and sisters have been doing well. I've had a a blessed week since we last had our last broadcast. I want to give all praises to the Most High Ahaya in the name of His Son Christ Yeshaya for being here to have the opportunity to first and foremost part partake in the upcoming seventh day of the week Sabbath starting Friday night at sundown. As uh, you know, depending on where you are in the world, you may already be in the Sabbath, you may be going into the Sabbath, but um, it's always a blessing to see another one of his holy days and to partake in it and to keep it holy also uh to be here to have another broadcast on on uh, youtube streaming live as well as blog talk uh, to be able to have both platforms running in the past we've only done the uh blog talk and about two months ago we started doing both the uh the youtube stream which was the first and with that, able to do the blog talk in conjunction for uh, keeping the call lines open because it's good to always hear brothers and sisters come in and speak and bring whatever they have, whether it be questions or comments or information. So it's definitely uh, all praises to the Most High for this occasion. Okay. Uh, have a lot of information to go into tonight uh, the, just so that. Brothers and sisters may know before we go into the information, just want to go into the different ways how you can listen to the broadcast. All right. We are streaming live from YouTube. We are streaming from the GOCC Texas YouTube channel. So you can go to your YouTube search box, type in GOCC Texas. Those are two words. Or you can simply in the address bar or your URL you can put in is youtube.com slash user slash G O C C Texas all one word capital G capital T and that'll take you to the direct G O C C Texas channel. If you like to call in and listen through your phone uh, maybe you don't have access to the internet or you'd like to chime in in segment two when we go to the call lines. The guest call the number is 515-605-9327. Again, 515-605-9327. You can press the number one if you'd like to speak. That'll put you into the guest call queue. And when we go to the call lines, we will uh, take your calls. All right, let me see here. Just checking to see if Brother Shamnawala has made it into the queue. I don't believe I see him yet. Okay, but that's all right. We're still able to go ahead and get the show started. So just so brothers and sisters can understand what we're going into tonight, I'm going to go ahead and, and let y'all know the title of tonight's broadcast. And I hope that all of y'all are able to hear me um, loud and clear. Hope all of y'all are able to hear me loud and clear. If not, at any time, make sure in the chat that you let me know if there's any audio issues or video issues or any issues at all so we can make sure that the show is efficient for everybody's viewing and listening. Tonight's title for the broadcast is one well, moment pull it up here living in a cashless society living in a cashless society okay when i went through the news this week I was going through all the news and it was the main thing I was just seeing everywhere I went was talking about the economy and the currency. Of course, in future and in, in past broadcasts, we've spoken about 
the, the trade war, this, this orchestrated and engineered, manufactured trade war between America and China. We've spoke about the upcoming war with, our, with Iran. We talked about things as far as the state of the world economy, the global economy, the American economy. Just all the different things like uh, the plagues that are hitting America. We're going to talk about that tonight, too. That is going to bring forth a full blown cashless society, even though we are already living in a digital world. So therefore. It would only be, uh, you know, common for now money to become digital. Everything is going digital and we've been using, you know, credit cards and debit cards and online banking and you know cash apps and now they have uh the, the the new thing within recent years has come we have cryptocurrencies like bitcoin we're going to talk about all those things tonight and we're going to talk about how it all is going to take us to what it's going to take us to a world or a global currency. It's going to take us to a global or a world currency. Okay, this is the Economist cover from 1988, and it predicted in 2018 that there would be a world currency, that there would be, um, as you can see in this scripture, they, I mean, you can see in this picture, uh, uh, they say a picture tells a thousand words. So we're going to talk about this picture and, and, and break it down and what it means. We're going to talk about the phoenix. As you can see in this picture, it's a phoenix. We're going to talk about these things and more when we talk about living in a cashless society. I know you brothers and sisters have, you know, your own experiences when it comes to different apps that you're using on your phones how you're able to you know pay for things now through your phone all these things are tied hand in hand as you can see in this picture you see the phone the smartphone and you see there what are cryptocurrencies known as bitcoin see the cryptocurrencies the bitcoin there right so we're going to talk about All these things and more on tonight's broadcast. So you brothers and sisters, stay tuned for the information. And, you know, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready for going into segment one, getting ready for the information, making sure all the, 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 uh, the kinks are worked out for the broadcast tonight. You know, making the, the, the tweaks and adjustments that we need to do before we go into the information. So if brothers and sisters could do this one thing, this one favor for me, go ahead and click the like button. Go ahead and blast this on your, show, your social media, your, your Facebooks, your, your Twitters, your you know, email, whatever you use. Get the, get the word out on this information so that those who are out there, maybe, whether they're in the church, out the church, doesn't matter. People need to have access to the information, the times that we're living in. And they, need, they need to be focused in on certain things. Okay, things like the mark of the beast, which ultimately living in a cash society is going to bring forth is the mark of the beast. Okay, so we'll be right back. Stay tuned. And when we come back, we're going to go right into it. Living in a cashless society.
Yeah. Father, have mercy, don't never desert me. I'm just a lost soul, show me thy ways. Father, it's urgent, just make me a servant so I can serve you the rest of my days. Father, have mercy, don't never desert me. I'm just a lost soul, show me thy ways. Father, it's urgent, just make me a servant so I can serve you the rest of my days. Lately I've been really feeling quite uncertain, hurting, wondering what my purpose on this earth is. Riding through the fast lane, this world got me swerving. It's urgent that I find my way up out these curses. Send me an angel cause I know these demons steady lurking. Father please don't let the devil have his way with me. Stay with me, sing songs and pray with me. And let me see your face shine like the sunshine. And please raise me in that day like the sunrise. Prepare me like your sun's bright and hit me when your son cries give me the wisdom to speak the truth don't leave me tongue tied good and evil pressing me i feel the weight on both sides wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove is how i try to be every single place i stroll by i just want to win a bunch of souls for the most high Win a bunch of souls for the most Father, high. Have mercy, don't ever desert me. I'm just a lost soul, show me thy ways. Father, it's urgent, just make me a servant so I can serve you the rest of my days. Father, have mercy, don't ever desert me. I'm just a lost soul, show me thy ways. Father, it's urgent, just make me a servant so I can serve you the rest of my days. I'm praying to the men upstairs, that's what I used to call them So many tears on my face, it's like Niagara falling More facelifts than Kim K, more scars than Tina Fey And I know I'm on the bunch all because of curses Can't be selfish when I pray, gotta extend my hand I even pray for Kendra Lamar, give him a chance Cause it's so hard when you need deep and call the sinner man I'm only speaking from experience It's been long, it's been long, it's been long, it's been, long. It's been a long time coming I thank you for not putting me on trial Giving me my wife and my child Blessing me to come back around Cause I was so dirty I know I'm not worthy My faith will little shake it Can you please make it sturdy I'm walking on eggshells And my flesh is so thirsty And you can bring a horse to a water But you can't make them drink Bring knowledge to your partners But you can't make them think No longer believe in religion It's a man-made thing I how you gave his commandments Through Christ who made clean Could have been dead a while back But he winked Father have mercy Don't ever desert me I'm just a lost so show me thy ways Father, it's urgent Just make me a servant So I can serve you the rest of my days Father, have mercy Don't ever desert me I'm just a lost soul Show me thy ways Father, it's urgent Just make me a servant So I can serve you the rest of my days Kawabwat 
Shabbat Shalom, we are back. That was the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew, and now we're going to get the translation of that in the English. So, in order to do so, we're going to go to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 6. Just one moment here, let me get my sword out. Brother Shem Nawal, if you could read Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 for us. The book of St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, it reads, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Ahia. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Let's go to uh, St. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9. St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, Okay, so St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 20 is the actual scripture for the broadcast. Pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Now, for those who are familiar with the book of St. Matthew chapter 24, when you read at the very top, the disciples are speaking to uh, Christ. When Christ said that there shall be no stone upon not one left upon another that shall not be thrown down and the disciples were in awe like when will this happen and what will be the sign of thy coming and the in the end of the world okay so you know there was there was a time and this time was 70 a.d when this temple that christ was looking at was thrown down there was not one stone left upon another that was something that happened future tense 70 a.d 
So you're talking about decades after Christ had died and been resurrected. So what's happened in modern day Christendom, majority of Christians are following Sunday service. Okay, They're going to church on Sundays, you know, keeping that as the Sabbath or the Lord's day. When nowhere in scripture does it ever tell us to keep the first day of the week as the Sabbath. When you research Babylonian customs and traditions, they worship the sun. And so therefore their worship came on the first day of the week. And hence the name Sunday was given to that day. It was the day of the sun. So what's happened is modern day Christianity has been in intermingled with paganism. Babylonian so when we talk about coming out of Babylon it first starts in the mind you must first educate yourself and gain understanding of the ways of Babylon that have been bestowed upon you and that you've been groomed in and it's not just the the fallacies that are in the Christian church it's all the things that modern-day Babylon also known as United States of America, has taught us all of her ways. If it doesn't line up with Scripture, as far as what the Scriptures say we should do, then we have to examine that to see, okay, is that Babylonian? Is that evil? Should we be doing these things? And start to examine ourselves. And now we're starting the beginning process of coming out of Babylon. At the end of that process, there's going to come a judgment to Babylon, a physical judgment to America. So at the end of that, we know those who understand prophecy on modern day Babylon, the judgment will come with plagues. The judgment will come with an ultimate destruction of fire and that no man nor beast will dwell there. So there's going to come a point in time to where no man nor beast will be able to survive in America from the destruction. All right. But. Until then, our focus should be on our spiritual walk. Our focus should be on building, building with those of like minds, brothers and sisters, while the Heavenly Father is gathering the elect to the elect and bringing us together so we can build. Zephaniah 2 and 1 says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather yourselves, O nation not desired. So there's a gathering going on right now. So through that gathering, we'll continue your process of coming out of Babylon. As you continue to learn, you continue to grow, you, cont you continue to get deeply rooted spirits in the word of truth, which is the Bible, these scriptures. Also, being that within Matthew 24 and 20, Christ said, pray, pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath day. Because if you are keeping the Sabbath, understand the enemy knows this. So when will he look to attack? At your most vulnerable point, which will be on the Sabbath. When you're disconnecting from the world, maybe turning the TV off, turning the internet off. Not really paying attention to what's going on in your surroundings. However, Christ told us to watch and pray always. So what we like to do is we like to go into prophecy, news, current events. On Friday nights, going into your Sabbath, so you can have a mind and understanding of what's going on right now, real-time prophecy, what's just happened this current week, and maybe weeks in the past. So brothers and sisters can have a good feel of where we are in prophecy and be in that spirit as you also go into the spirit of peace and love and congregating and all those things that come with going into your Sabbath. All right? So tonight's show, going into the current events and the news and the Bible prophecy. Tonight's show is titled, Living in a Cashless Society. And not sure how much brothers and sisters pay attention to things like this in your current everyday life. Have we become so conditioned and so used to the fact that we're living in a cash society right now we're living in a society to where 
actual real first of all real currency doesn't even really exist you talk about paper money how does paper money have any value it only has value because they say it has value but the minute they they say it doesn't have value it's just paper on top of that it's not backed by anything tangible so at one point currency was something that had value for instance gold silver diamonds rubies precious stones those were things that you could actually say had value and that you could barter with and barter for not just precious metals but also things like seeds food water those things have value those are things that you can actually use but what they've done they put us in a society where they've given us paper money first that's the first thing they've done because at one point even the coins were made of precious metals the, the pennies were made of copper and maybe the silver dollars were made, made of silver eventually that changed and they were just made of junk metal then it, you had paper money, which, is, which was just paper. From there, now it would just be much easier if the money was just a number in a system somewhere as a digit. And through that, bring everybody into a system of digital money to where you're no longer operating with tangible assets you're now operating intangibly with your assets with things that are on a computer or on a database what all happens with this you have tracking you have surveillance you have control because now your money is being controlled not by you because you don't own it somebody else own it yeah it may be in your name but what would happen if the bank that you bank at if all your money's in the bank if it were to go down, what would happen to your money? Would you get your money if it's all in the bank and it's all just a number? So this is the society that we now are living in and we are continuing to go deeper into the abyss of the cashless society. So I now I want to go into... The, the articles that I have, that I, your research that's been done on this particular topic, living in a cashless society. Okay. So let me go ahead and go over here and show brothers and sisters some of the news headlines this week. Give me one moment. Just letting things transition here on my screen. And then we're going to go right into this information. Okay. So the first article we have here, off of activistpost.com, June 26, 2019, the dollar's toast, a preview of the next 10 years. Okay, that's he he headline number one, showing, you know, charts, data, Okay, I'm not going to go into that article. I'm going to go to the next headline here. But the dollar's toast, a preview of the next 10 years. And while my screen is loading here, I'm not sure if brother, brothers and sisters are familiar, but um, familiar with this, but I, I experienced something for the first time today when I went to the bank. I went to the bank to deposit some cash in, into my bank. And it's crazy going into this particular lesson how the spirit works. 
and how things like, you know, you, you see them in real time with what's going on in your world. And I went to my bank and they had this set up. And basically they have it now where you can go. You don't need to talk to a teller to make a deposit. You basically can go to a machine and deposit your money. Now I know they probably had these things for a while. I don't know what's going on with my screen here. This is different. Give me one moment here, fam. Just waiting for my screen to come back. But, okay, so let me continue here. I think I may have lost blog talk. Let me make sure. Don't know what's going on with the screen. Let me close some apps on my computer. I haven't had this issue, so I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, it says it's still going so good. So going back to what I was saying, I went to my bank and they had this set up to where you can insert your debit card and within inserting your debit card, it, it pulls up your account. Of course, you have a digital screen in front of you, a touch screen, and you can, you know, input your information as far as going through the prompts and then it asked what would you like to do I clicked on deposit and then um, on the side it had a, a place where you could actually put your money and insert your money and then it counts your money it tells you okay is this the amount of money you're depositing you know confirm so you're going through the steps of depositing money through a digital bank teller and my money now that I'm inserting, which is actual physical paper money, it's not necessarily money that you would consider money in biblical times, but it's in this modern day world, paper money has now been taken and translated into a digital number. So while I'm doing and going through this process, and again, this is the first time I've gone through this process. Um, Give me one moment here. I want to get the um, blog talk back up. I, my computer, it looks like it crashed this app. So brothers and sisters, stay patient with me here. I'll get right back into my story. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please enter your host pin. When finished, press the pound key. Start your show now, press 1. To hear important instructions, press 2. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. All right, so I should be back in the uh, blog talk queue. For those that are on blog talk, should be able to hear me now. And uh, so let me go back to my story. I'll, I'll repeat it again for those who may on blog talk may not have heard me. But uh, what I was saying is that I was in bank of uh in my bank today and while i was there I, it was a digital deposit machine set up or a digital teller to where i could go and interact with a touch screen there was a camera in the touch screen to watch me while i'm doing this you know for whatever security reasons that they would claim needs to be security in that transaction and i walked through the prompts of clicking on deposit and then i took my physical actual real money and I put it into a slot and then it counted my money and then it read back to confirm the money I was depositing was the actual amount. And then from there, uh, you know, I, I completed the transaction and now I've I've done a 
deposit without using an actual physical purse. And so this is there's a lot of things that can be taken from this experience. A lot of different things. Not only going into a digital world, as I saw my paper money being converted into digital numbers right before my very eyes so that I could use it to do what I need to do when it comes to paying for different things, right? But also the fact that people are being replaced with robots and machines. So now you're going to start to see to where less and less people are going to have jobs in banks because of these machines. Okay, so there's a lot of different things that are coming out just with me seeing this, knowing that tonight I'm going to do a broadcast on living in a cash society. And this first time I've seen this, I'm, I'm just really tripping out like, wow, like this is amazing. The confirmation the Holy Spirit gives when you're, you're, you're dealing in situations. So brothers just have to be real keen to things that are going on in your life because you, you, you never know when the Holy Spirit is revealing certain things to you. Let's go back to our next article headline. Activistpost.com. June 26, 2019. Same date as the last article. A currency upheaval is coming. Okay, you see a fist crushing a dollar sign. Okay, a currency upheaval is coming. Okay, let's go to the next headline. Just waiting for it to load here. Okay, and this is the next article coming off of ActivistPost.com. Economic sirens are going off. Can you hear them? June 26, 2019. So, so far we've seen three articles talking about something dealing with money. And something bad when it comes to money, all on the same June 26th date. Economic sirens are going off. Can you hear them? Another graph. Graphs. Okay. Next article. ActivistPost.com, June 25th, 2019, the day before, June 26th, big tech, big banks push for what? Cashless society. Cashless society. Hmm, interesting. Right? So let's let, let's let's take a look here. And let's go into some information. Let's na let's now start to go into some of these articles, because I think by now we kind of get a a good feel for what's being seen right now with certain things that are happening when it comes to money and the government and governments and the, the global economy. So this comes off of foxbusiness.com. It says Bank of America CEO says company wants a cashless society. Bank of America CEO says company wants a cashless society published June 20th, 2019. Now, remember how I said I went into the bank today? And it just so happens the bank that I went into was a Bank of America. Now, it was my first time going to that particular branch. Right. But it was interesting to see. 
the technology that was in place to have a digital bank teller and deposit taker take my money and convert it into digital currency. Take the paper, okay? So let's read this article here. Bank of America CEO, capital spending is slowing down. Fox Business's Maria uh, Bartiromo interviews Bank of America CEO Brian uh, Moynihan about the state of the U.S. economy, capital spending, and the U.S.-China trade tensions. Okay, we did a broadcast on this a few weeks back. Bank of America CEO Brian Monahan spoke this week about embracing digital payment transactions while moving towards a what? Cashless society. Monahan made comments Wednesday during Fortune's brainstorm finance conference in New York. The CEO spoke about Zelle. I guess it's Zelle or Zelly, Google, Pl Google Pay, and Apple Pay in its increasing popularity. He said Bank of America will continue to move towards digital banking transactions. So this isn't something that's just a, a, a trend and hey, it may, it may be something that doesn't last or you know we could go back to gold or you know paper money whatever no bank of america will continue to move toward okay so there this is a continued moving towards this goal okay the devil is continuing to move towards his goal of bringing forth the mark of the beast Okay, and, and, and the big step in that is the digital banking transactions in a cashless society. He says, we want a cashless society. Who is the we, brothers and sisters? Is he speaking for all of us? Or is he speaking for a certain group of individuals? That's the question I would ask him. Who is this we, sir? We want a cashless society, Moynihan told Fortune son Tully. Tully, we have more to gain than anybody from a pure cost perspective. So you have to be able to look and read between the lines, brothers and sisters, because when you do, you will see that the devil is in the details. We, who is the we that has more to gain than anybody? from a pure operating cost perspective. Okay, read between the lines. They speak in code. He explained that Bank of America spends $5 billion for checks and cash to move around the company. Okay, Monahan pointed out that many of the deposits are not made at the bank's branches, but he didn't discount the importance of having locations. On the other hand, between now and tomorrow, at this time, 800,000 people will walk in our branches, he said. It's a high-tech business, but you need both to be successful. Some countries have already embraced the cashless route. Okay, and that's a whole nother conversation you already have countries like sweden who are, who have already started to go and have gone cashless in a survey conducted in 2018 just 13 percent of swedes reported using cash for a transaction so only 13 percent of the swedish population is using cash physical cash the country's retailers predicted by 2025 that they would stop accepting cash for transactions. And this, again, is just a number. If you're already at 13%, like 2025 is 
it's it's it's, it's too far out. Like they could do this by next year. Like thirteen percent is easy to wipe out in a year. Some Swedes have even gotten a what? Microchip inserted into their what? Hands as a quick and convenient way of pain. NPR reported. Hmm. Now, mind you, this is foxbusiness.com. This is not an alternative media channel where somebody could be said, oh, that's conspiracy talk. No, this is real talk. And they're putting it right in your face. Not only is it going cashless and digital, but also people are receiving microchips into their hands. So before we go even any further, I want to read some scriptures. I was going to say and hold off on some scriptures for now, but with, with seeing that, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard, it's hard to now not go straight into scriptures. So let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 13. And this is just so brothers and brothers and sisters and those who are in the listening audience can see just how accurate Bible prophecy in this Bible is for all the non-believers that don't believe in the Bible. All those who lack faith or are weak in faith can see just how real this Bible is and the times we are living in. We are living in the times of a cashless society. So, Brother Shamna Wa'ala, if you could for me, we're at Revelations 13, and let's start at verse 16. The book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 16, and it reads, And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So he causeth all, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a what? A mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So, okay, so what does this mean? So we're only reading the scripture for those who maybe not be familiar with the scripture. So what does that mean, right? We just read in the article how some people in Sweden have already taken a mark or a microchip in their hand when it comes to money. Let's see if Revelation 13 has anything to do with money. Read verse 17. Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And that no man, nobody, in this beast system will be able to do what? Buy or sell. That is money. When you buy something, you're going to use money. We're living in a world of money. Doesn't mean that people don't trade or people don't have garage sales and those things. But we know we live in a world that's driven by money. It's the root of all evil. Buying requires money and selling requires money when you sell something to somebody what are they going to give you nine times out of ten they're going to give you money so no man will be able to spend money or receive money unless he has what a mark of who the beast in their right hand or in their forehead. So is this, is this just a coincidence what we're reading in this article about Sweden, cashless society, digital currency, marks of uh, microchips in their 
hands to make these cashless transactions more convenient. So anybody that can't see, those that are out there that can't see the writing on the wall and what this means, you're in denial and you're in a, in a high level of delusion. High, high level of delusion. Just real quick, there was um, a, 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 a guy who was a rapper who recently died. Some of you may know. SoCal died. And I, that's a conversation for another day. Uh, Nipsey Hussle. Okay? Nipsey Hussle. A lot of people may not be familiar, but Nipsey Hussle was starting his own cashless uh, shopping center. He had a whole shopping center set up in the hood that was cashless. And it was, it was boasted. He, he was boasting in this cashless system he had set up in the hood, the shopping center he had. Brothers and sisters researched that and looked that up. Okay, and it was something you think about, like, why is this something that is being pushed upon in our neighborhoods like this why is you know this guy you know you don't really hear about you know no country singer going into a white neighborhood and pushing a cashless system like that not that saying that that doesn't happen but why is it that this guy's coming to the hood with this you know people in the in the hood they're probably using food stamps and you know saving money in piggy banks and stuff like that so you know we in those conditions really probably aren't using digital currency like that so what it is it's an opportunity to now get the lower levels because it said both rich and poor right so now the poor have the opportunity to be introduced to a cashless society and no longer be dealing with money under the mattress getting them acclimated to this whole B system. Okay, so a lot of people don't know about Nipsey Hussle, and there's a lot of things we could talk about. We could make a show in itself ab about this guy and his his so-called death, and him being a so-called black man, or so-called Israelite man, a man that comes from Israel. We could do a whole broadcast just on that alone and bring out a lot of stuff that brothers and sisters may be surprised to find out when it comes to this 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 rapper and who he really is and really was and who what he was really doing but that's again another topic for another day i'm just showing you what's going on and that brothers and sisters need to be paying and taking heed paying attention and taking heed to the things that are happening in our neighborhoods okay so that's um let's go to the next article here So for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, it's crystal clear what we're reading so far, what we're seeing, and what, you know, what's being said, what's going on. Some people may be in denial. You know, they may think it's not that big a deal. Okay, well, they may say, oh, the Bible, that's not what it means. Okay, all right, well, hey, to each his own, right? Our job is to bring forth the information. Brothers and sisters have to make a choice. And believe you me, whether you realize it or not, whether you believe in it or not, it's going to come down to a time when you will have to make a choice to receive the mark of the beast in your right hand or your forehead if you want to buy or sell in this system. Next article. ActivistPost.com, June 26, 2019. The pain of this new economic downturn is starting to show up all over the country. Again, same date, June 26, 2019. It's going to take a miracle. For the U.S. economy 
to pull out of this tailspin because the economic numbers are really starting to deteriorate very rapidly now. On Tuesday, we got some more new numbers and they were just as bad as we thought they might be. But even before today's numbers, all of the data were telling us the exact same thing. The New York Fed's Empire State Manufacturing Index just suffered the worst one month decline in U.S. history. The New York, let me say that again, the New York Fed Empire State Manufacturing Index just suffered the worst one month decline in the history of the United States. Morgan Stanley's Business Conditions Index just suffered the largest one month decline that we have ever seen. So another first ever. Morgan Stanley's Business Conditions Index. Largest one month decline we've ever seen. Global trade numbers are the worst they have been since the last recession. And just last week, I detailed the complete and utter bloodbath that we are witnessing in the U.S. trucking industry right now. So considering what we already knew, it shouldn't have been a surprise that new home sales in the U.S. were down a whopping 7.8% during the month of May. Okay. Sales of new U.S. homes slumped 7.8% in May as sales plunged in the pricier northeastern and western markets. The Commerce Department said Tuesday that new homes sold at a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 626,000 in May down from 679,000 in April. During the first five months of the year, purchases of new homes have fallen 3.7% compared to the same period in 2018. So things are falling. Sort of like Revelation 18 when it says Babylon, the great is falling. It is falling. Those are absolutely horrible numbers. And this is precisely what a recession looks like. On Tuesday, we also learned that U.S. consumer confidence is rapidly declining. Consumer confidence is on the decline. The conference board's consumer confidence index tumbled to 121.5 in June, dropping from a downwardly revised reading of 131.3 in May and snapping three consecutive months of improvement. June's results missed consensus expectations for a reading of 131, according to Bloomberg compiled data, and marked the lowest level in nearly two years. Once again, this is precisely what we would expect to see during a recession. And yet, I continue to see some clu clueless mainstream media reports that insist that the U.S. economy is doing well. Okay, so their job is to make you think everything is fine. The, the boiling pot of hot water isn't getting hotter. It's the same temperature as what they would tell you, even though the temperature is going up. Apparently, FedEx didn't get the memo because they lost nearly $2 billion in the quarter ending May 31st. In the fiscal fourth quarter, which ended May 31st, FedEx reported a loss of $1.97 billion compared with profits of $1.13 billion a year earlier. FedEx blamed this horrible number on the ongoing global economic slowdown. And unfortunately, things are not likely to get any better for them anytime soon. Many in the mainstream media continue to speak of the next recession as some future event. But when we get the final economic numbers many months from now, we may discover that it had already started by now. So basically, we could already be in a recession is what the, what the author is saying. And we wouldn't be told this until way down the road. In fact, one prominent economist recently stated that he believes that we're in probably already in a recession. We're probably already in a recession. Gary Schilling, an, ec economist, an economist and financial analyst who was credited with predicting several recessions over the past 40 years, thinks the U.S. is in a relatively mild slump. I think we're probably already in a recession, but I think it will probably be a run of the mill affair, which means real GDP would decline 1.5% to 2%, not the 35 to 4% 
you have had in the very serious recessions. Schilling, president of economic and financial research firm A. Schilling & Co. said in a recent interview broadcast this week by Real Vision, even Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell is now admitting that our economic outlook has become cloudier. The following comes from ABC News. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said Tuesday the economic outlook has become cloudier since early May with rising uncertainty, uncertainties over trade and global gr growth causing the central bank to reassess its next move on interest rates. Speaking to the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, Powell said the Fed is now grappling with the question of whether those uncertainties will continue to weigh on the outlook and require action. I find it very interesting that Powell chose the Council on Foreign Relations as the venue for this address. I think that tells us a lot about where Powell's true loyalties are. The Council on Foreign Relations has dominated the political landscape in Washington for a long time, and this has been true no matter which political party has been in power. Meanwhile, the global trade war continues to intensify, and over 300 companies are literally begging the Trump administration to find a way to end it. So now it's going back to the China, the, the America-China trade war that we spoke about a few weeks back. And this article doesn't even go into the sanctions that America has just put on Iran, which will have an effect on things like oil prices and other economic factors. Okay, But this is, again, the blowback from the manufactured, engineered, orchestrated America-China trade war. More than 300 companies are talking to government officials in Washington this month about how detrimental the trade war between the U.S. and China has been and will be to their business. Testifying in front of the U.S. and the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative, major U.S. companies including Best Buy, HP, and Hallmark cards are voicing concerns about how the additional tariffs that President Donald Trump threatened to slap on China would impact their businesses and cause them to lose business to foreign competitors. Sadly, it isn't likely that the trade war will end anytime soon. In fact, it is probably much more likely that a shooting war will start in the Middle East instead. And if that happens, our current economic problems will dramatically escalate. So remember, brothers and sisters, I was telling you that this war with Iran would coincide with the trade war with China and what it would do to the economy. So notice how all these things are happening simultaneously as we're getting closer to the big one. And when I say big one, I'm not talking about earthquake, even though that's coming too. But okay, you're talking about going into a recession, and within that, you're going to have a collapse. Because in 2008, Obama bailed the banks out. So really, the American economy should have collapsed then, but it wasn't time for it to collapse. You see, with them, they have a schedule that they are keeping. They know exactly when they need certain things to happen in this earth. And it wasn't time. But under Donald Trump, just as we showed on The Simpsons predicted years before Donald Trump was even running for president, that he would not only be president, but under his presidency, the economy would tank. So this is now that time. We've had the great years of Trump where the economy has been what you, what you would call good, even though it is not good, but just what seems good because things seem normal to us in our living. But we're now about to go into a time, going into his second term, where we're going into the bad times of his presidency that are going to lead to the collapse of the American dollar, which will be a domino effect that will collapse other currencies across the world and will bring forth the what? Mark of the beast. And all the while this is happening, 
Bank of America CEO is calling for a digital and cashless society. So everybody in the devil's, you know, army is working and doing their part to bring forth and bring forth these things. They all work together the same way you talk about a body, the body of Christ. There are different ministries, different offices, and all those offices work together for the edifying of the saints. So the devil's army is doing the same thing. They're all working together, hand in hand, to bring forth this agenda. Okay. It says here, the wheels are starting to come off. And the U.S. economy is beginning to spin out of control. Perhaps the Federal Reserve will be able to pull another rabbit out of the hat and pull off a miracle once again. But I doubt it. We haven't se seen conditions like this since the great financial crisis of 2008. And the remainder of 2019 threatens to be extremely interesting indeed. Okay. So what do you brothers and sisters think? What do you what do you what do you what do you all see is going on? I see the, 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 the chat is definitely going off the chain right now. A lot of people a lot of things being said in the chat right now so um, gonna get to your comments here later but I want to continue to build on living in a cashless society not just presently living in it but the future cashless society which will entail the mark of the beast and we've talked about 5G the Internet of Things, all of that is going to play in together. All of these things are going to go hand in hand. And they're going to play in. And in, 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 um, it's, it's all going to play hand in hand. So let's go to our next article. Actually, I want to, before we go into any more articles, I now want to go into some what you would call esoteric information okay we talk about the collapse of the US dollar right what will the collapse of the US dollar bring collapse of the US dollar will bring forth a world currency. Notice here you see a phoenix bird on your screen. You see the date on a coin of 2018 and you see money on fire. So we're going to talk about this image you see on your screen here. We're going to talk about it, right? Let me get the next, you know, information I have here available uh, ready on my screen. Okay. First things first, I want to talk about I want to talk about the Phoenix. Some people may not know what the Fe what the Phoenix is. So I would like to talk about the Phoenix. Familiarize yourself with what this creature, which is mythological, it wasn't. It wasn't a creature the Most High created. Okay, I'm going to talk about this. This creature. Just one moment here, letting my screen load itself. Just loading up this article here for you. And then I'm going to share my screen. 
so y'all can see what I'm looking at here. And when I'm running this many apps, I mean, you wouldn't believe how many apps I'm running. And some of them are really, really high powered apps. And I've had some of these articles pulled up for a day or so too. So it takes up a lot of memory to uh, be able to run all of this. And, um, you know, for the most part, things have, you know, flown pretty, pretty well. But today I actually didn't restart my computer before the show and that's what we're looking at why it's taking some time going from one piece of information to the next but it should be up here in just a moment but I want to I want to talk about this mythical phoenix bird and I always implore brothers and sisters to do your own research when it comes to, to things as well and see what information you come come across see what the holy spirit you know shows and reveals to you when it comes to information so here we are off of ancientorigins.net and on and on ancientorigins.net it says here, symbolism of the mythical phoenix bird, renewal, renewal, rebirth, and what? Destruction. So first of all, this bird is mythical. But look what comes with this bird, renewal, rebirth, and destruction. It says here, in ancient mythology, the symbolism of the majestic phoenix bird, which is most often connected with the sun, dies and is reborn across cultures and throughout time. Notice how this bird is connected to the sun. Bringing back in the Babylonian pagan worship. Ancient legend paints a picture of a magical bird radiant and shimmering which lives for several hundred years notice it says it lives for several hundred years before it dies by bursting into flames it is then reborn from the ashes to start a new long life so powerful is the symbolism that it is a motive and image that is still used commonly today in popular culture and folklore. The legendary phoenix is a large grand bird, much like a, a what? An eagle. Okay, we're going to come back to that. Eagle or peacock. It is brilliantly colored in reds, which is scarlet, purples, and yellows as it is associated with the rising sun and fire so the phoenix is associated with the rising s-u-n sun it builds its own funeral pyre or nest and it ignites it with a single clap of its wings after death it rises gloriously from the ashes and flies away Phoenix bird symbolism, Phoenix bird symbolizes renewal and resurrection. The Phoenix symbolizes renewal and resurrection and represents many themes, such as the sun, time, the empire, uh, metapsychosis, consecration, resurrection, life in the heavenly paradise, Christ, notice how they're trying to connect this with the Christ. Now, this isn't the 
biblical Christ. This is the pagan Christ. That's why you see the death and resurrection and renewal. So they'll take that from Christ, paganize it, and then give you back and say, okay, well, Christ is like the phoenix. No. They're trying to make the phoenix like Christ. Not only Christ, but who? Mary. Virginity. So they'll even try to attach the virgin birth, the so-called virgin birth, to the phoenix. When what else? The exceptional man. So this is going to, the phoenix will bring forth the exceptional man. So we're going to talk about a lot of these particular points. Okay. Breaking down this phoenix. It says here, Tina Garnett writes in the phoenix in Egyptian, Arab, and Greek mythology of the long-lived bird. When it feels it's in approaching, it builds a nest with the finest aromatic wood set it on fire and is consumed by the flames from the pile of ashes a new phoenix arises young and powerful it then embalms the ashes of its predecessor in an egg of myrrh and flies to the city of the sun heliopolis where where it deposits the egg on the altar of the what sun god sun god there are lesser known versions of the myth in which the phoenix dies and simply decomposes before rebirth. The Greek named it the phoenix, but it is associated with the Egyptian Bennu, the Native American Thunderbird, the Russian Firebird, the Chinese Fing Huang, and the Japanese Ho'o. It is believed that the Greeks called the Canaanites the uh, Phoenikes or Phoenicians, which may derive from the Greek word phoenix, meaning crimson or purple. Indeed, the symbology of the phoenix is also closely tied with the Phoenicians. Okay. So there's more here. I'm not going to read all of this. You brothers and sisters can always come here and read. It says destruction and creation. The mythical phoenix has been incorporated into many religions. Signifying eternal life, destruction, creation, and fresh beginnings. Due to the themes of death and resurrection, it was adopted a symbol One moment here. I think Blog Talk may have dropped me. Just one moment here, brothers and sisters. I'm just going to get Blog Talk back and then we'll go ahead and go back into this phoenix welcome to blog talk radio please enter your host pin when finished press the pound key to start your show now press 1 to hear important instructions, press 2. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. All right. I hope you brothers and sisters can hear me on the blog talk. Those that um, are on, uh, looks like we got dropped, but I'm picking back up with the Phoenix. And speaking of its destruction and creation... It says the mythical phoenix has been incorporated into many religions signifying eternal life, destruction, creation, and fresh beginnings. Due to the themes of death and resurrection, it was adopted a symbol in early Christianity. So here we can see, going back to what was said at the beginning of this broadcast about how coming out of Babylon, 
means coming out of the pagan Christianity they've given us. And as you can see, early Christianity adopted this symbol of the phoenix. Now, let me ask a question. If Christ was already crucified and resurrected, and he's our symbol as Christians, why would we need a bird that's affiliated with the sun god as a symbol of our faith? More proof that modern day Christianity has been infused with paganism on so many different levels, not just with this phoenix bird. So they would rather give you the phoenix bird to replace Christ. And try to say, oh, they're one and the same. No, they're not one and the same. The phoenix bird is mythological. Okay, it's the devil's creation. As, as an analogy of Christ's death and three days later in his resurrection. The image became a popular symbol on early Christian tombstones. It is also symbolic of a cosmic fire some believe created the, wor the world and which will consume it. Now let's look at Jewish legend. In Jewish legend, now this isn't biblical, this is Jewish. Okay, These are those who believe in what? The Babylonian Talmud. In Jewish legend, the phoenix is known as the Milcom, a faithful and immortal bird, going back to Eden, where Eve, when Eve possessed the apple of knowledge. Look at that. Hmm. They associate this bird to Eve when she possessed the apple of knowledge. This is deep, brothers and sisters, because... Through that knowledge was the fall of mankind. It was, it was perverted wisdom. It was knowledge we never were supposed to have or know. And it was rebellion and a transgression against the Most High God. But this is what the Jewish people believe. That, that this bird symbolizes Eve's possession of that. It wasn't an apple. It was fruit. Okay. This fruit. This is key. We're going to come back to this. She tempted the animals of the garden with the forbidden fruit. The milk and bird re refused the offer and was granted for its faith a town where it would live in peace almost eternally, re rebirthing every thousand years, immune to the angel of death. Now, why is it that, that the Jewish people can so easily believe in this mythological bird but they can't believe in Christ. That's something you have to question in itself. They can believe in this thing right here. Some myth. But they can't believe in Christ. They would rather believe in this resurrection. And this eternal life and rebirth. Immortality. Okay, let's see if there's any more here. It says, continually morphing and remorphing, the phoenix represents the idea that the end is only the beginning. Okay. Much like this powerful myth, the symbol of the phoenix will be reborn over and over again in human legend and imagination. What does the scriptures tell us about imaginations? First Corinthians chapter six, casting down all imagination and bringing every thought into subjection to who? Christ. Somebody else spoke about the Phoenix. Who else spoke about the Phoenix, brothers and sisters? Let me, let, me, let me introduce y'all to a, a, a man. Some of y'all may be familiar with him, some may be not.
How many people are familiar with this man that you see on your screen here? Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall is known as the most renowned Freemason of the 20th century. He's the father of Freemasonry of the 20th century. Now notice here, he wrote a book called The Secret Destiny of America. What is the secret destiny? What is, what is, first of all, what is a secret? A secret is something that is private or something that is hidden. So what is the hidden destiny of America? And when you talk about secrets, you can only have to mention, especially in a situation like this, secret societies. We talk about hidden you talk about the occult, because the occult, occult means hidden. So we're talking about the esoteric knowledge of a few men. And when you look at this man right here, this character, this wizard, and you look in his eyes, does he, does he not look like the devil himself? When you look at this man, and you, and you should see some other pictures of him, disturbing how wicked this man looks. But the reason I'm showing you this man is because he is going to speak on this phoenix. And we're going to come back to this image here off the Economist cover from 1988. This cover was made in 1988, 30 years before 2018, which is the date on this coin. So now that you're kind of somewhat familiar with Manly P. Hall, We're going to go to our next article, and then we're going to then begin to wrap up what this Economist cover is showing us and break it down. All right. All right. So, you share my screen. We're here on GnosticWarrior.com. And I'm, I'm, I'm coming down some in this article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just want to get straight to the point. It says, as 33rd degree Freemasonic author Manny P. Hall said in his book, the Phoenix, an illustrated review of occultism and philosophy. So Manly P. Hall, not only did he have a book called The Secret Destiny of America, but he also had a book called The Phoenix, talking about the occult and philosophy. What does Colossians 2 and 8 tell us? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Okay, but this is going back to that so-called apple that Eve had in her hand that the Jewish believe in, this phoenix represented. So it says here, among the ancients, a fabulous bird called the phoenix is described by early writers. In size and shape, it resembles the what? The eagle, but with certain differences. The body of the phoenix is one covered with glossy purple feathers and the plumes in its tail are alternately blue and red. The head of the bird is light in color and about its neck is a circle of golden plumage. At the back of its back, the phoenix has a chest of feathers of brilliant color. The phoenix, it is said, lives for 500 years and at its death, its body opens and the newborn phoenix emerges. Remember, it said the phoenix lives for several hundred years. Okay. So at the end of this 500 years or the end of these hundred years, not that it's always 500, but somewhere in that range, it goes through a death and a rebirth. And through this rebirth, it reemerges. Because of, it, of this symbolism, the phoenix is generally regarded as representing immortality and resurrection. The phoenix 
is one sign of the secret orders of the ancient world, was that secret word again, and of the initiate of those orders. For it was common to refer to one who had been accepted into the temples. Now, mind you, brothers and sisters, these aren't the temples we read of in the Bible. These are secret society lodges. Okay? It is common to refer to one who has been accepted into the temples as a man twice born or reborn. Wisdom confers a new life and those who become wise are born again. So this is the born again that they would want you to believe in. That you can be reborn again as a phoenix or through the phoenix. And then try to say it's the same as Christ. No, this is the devil. This is not the same as Christ. Because why would you need, if you already have Christ, why do you need a phoenix? Just believe in Christ. No, this is them trying to replace Christ. Let's keep going. Now this is the book, The Phoenix, an illustrated review of occultism and philosophy. This is out of his book. The phoenix, or Bennu, is believed to be a divine bird going back to Egypt. This phoenix destroys itself in flames. Now notice how the phoenix destroys itself. It's not destroyed by something else. It destroys itself in flames and then rises from the ashes. Most occultists believe that the phoenix is a symbol of who? Lucifer. So why would you then compare that to Christ? If most occultists believe that this bird is a symbol of Lucifer, how could you then attach that to Christ? So you see, you see how, 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 how simple you must be to get caught up in believing in this phoenix and trying to say, oh, it could be a, a symbol for Christianity? This is a symbol of Lucifer who was cast down in flames and who they think will one day rise triumphant. So they're saying that this phoenix represents who? Lucifer. He was cast down in flames and he will resurrect and, and rise. And what does Isaiah 14 say? Uh, Lucifer, how art thou fallen from heaven? For he has said that he will ascend above the heights of the clouds, that he will be, that he will, he will sit above the, the throne of the Most High, he will be like the Most High. Right? So when you are giving homage to the Phoenix, you're actually giving homage to Lucifer. And you're, and you're saying, he will rise again and sit on the Most High's throne. That's what this Phoenix actually is. This, of course, also relates to the rising of Hiram Abiff, the Masonic Christ. Now, here's the, here's, here's the, the, the key part of what I'm bringing out to, to show this picture, this picture that I'm showing on the Economist cover. Even though all the rest of the stuff is good. Check this out. More often than not, when you see the symbol of this majestic bird, you can almost guarantee that it was left there by a descendant of this most ancient tribe as a sign that the phoenix has ris risen in that land. In 1782, Freemason William Barton had proposed a phoenix in flames as the original, what? Great seal in America as a symbol of renewed liberty. So Freemason in 1782, William Barton had said, let's put the Phoenix as the great seal of America. Mind you, in Freemasonry, they believe in Lucifer being the Phoenix. So what are, what, what are they saying here? If they're gonna put this Phoenix now, or, or have the idea to put this Phoenix, as America's great seal of a what renewed liberty? A renewed liberty against who? A renewed liberty against the Most High God. See, America was created 
to be the total defiance of the Most High God. And these Freemasons, these occultists know it. And this is why you have Manly P. Hall who has his book titled The Secret Destiny of America. The Secret Destiny, we're going to talk, we're going to break it down. Like if, if brother, Some brothers and sisters maybe already connected some dots here, but we're going to break it down. And we've talked about this actually in, in, in past blog talks, for those that may remember. We've actually done ser a series on this whole dollar breakdown. But I didn't know I, was, I was, wasn't showing my screen. So you can see this Gnostic Warrior website that I've been reading from. Okay. You have the double-headed double eagle, which is the phoenix. You have the 33rd degree at the top. The pyramid with the, with, the, with the sun rays beaming off the top of this pyramid with the crown on. Order ab chao. Order out of chaos. And the stars. Okay, but we know that the Lucifer represents the the uh, Phoenix, and now these Freemasons want to put this seal as for America's seal. It's a rebellion against the Most High God. America was created in total defiance to go against the Most High God, and they know it. And this is the secret of America's destiny. America's destiny. We're going to find out is the phoenix and remember the phoenix destroys itself okay we're going to touch back on that in 1841 the phoenix was replaced by the eagle as our national bird check this out but as manly p hall says upon the great seal is but a con conventionalized phoenix a fact plainly discernible from an examination of the original seal. So what he's saying is, if you look at the original seal, which is this right here, you will realize that the eagle you see as the, as the great seal of the United States of America is nothing more than a phoenix. The eagle is the phoenix. It's not an eagle at all. They told you that the eagle was America's, um, you know, the image of America, that America would be represented by the bald eagle. But it was a phoenix the whole time. Because when you look, when you, when you understand Freemasonry and how these occultists think, symbols have multiple meanings. They have levels of meanings. So whereas you see an eagle, they see a phoenix. And they know you don't have the history to know that before they told you it was an eagle, that it was originally a phoenix. Now, when you look at this right here, this original seal, does this not look like in some form or fashion a U.S. dollar? Well, let's take a look. It says here, we can, we can now find the eagle that has taken the place of the phoenix on the rear of the dollar bill with the morning star, the star of David above its head. So notice what they would tell you is an eagle above its head is like the sun, sun rays, and you have stars. And these stars form a what? Star of Moloch, six-pointed star. So look at this. And look at this. There's your sun above the head. There are your stars. And again, or, uh, Ordo Ab Chao. Order out of chaos. Okay. Check this out. It says. Published anonymously in Altona in 1785, Geheim Figurin, the Rosencruiser, Secret Symbols of the Rosicrucians, another secret society, 
contains alchemical and hermetic diagrams, many instances of a double-headed eagle. This book was purported to be a work of 16th and 17th century Rosicrucian adepts. The double-headed phoenix is a symbol of a of perfected man. So not only does it represent America, but the phoenix also, the double-headed phoenix, represents the symbol of a perfected man. So let's break it down now. Now that we've gotten that, now let's break it down. We're looking back at the Economist cover, right? 1988, 30 years before 2018, we see a phoenix. We see the dollar below the phoenix. Money, paper money, on fire. Not just a dollar, but you see other currencies in here, other countries' currencies, on fire. And you see a coin. Check this coin out on this phoenix. Check this coin out, right? What does that coin look like to you? Does this coin look similar to this coin right here? This is a Bitcoin. So look at that Bitcoin. And then let's now look at the coin on the chest of this phoenix. You notice how in 2018, it was like this major push for cryptocurrency. Like everybody was going, like 2018 was probably the biggest year where cryptocurrency was pushed its hardest. I mean, I remember like it was yesterday. It was, it was just, every time you look up, it was Bitcoin this, cryptocurrency this. It was so heavy in the news. And then they pushed it within alternative media circles so that people would, in the alternative would think, oh, this is a good way to get around the dollar since we know the dollar is going to collapse and it's not real money. So now it's trying to get people in the alternative community to then push Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency. So could this, and this was in 1988 when this magazine was produced. And again, they do things way in advance to show you that 2018 would be a marker when they would really push for digital currency, world currency, and a what? Cashless society. This would be the beginning of them bringing forth the death and demise of world currencies, shifting things into cashless Cash of society, digital money, digital transactions. Also, this phoenix represents America. And this is the secret that Manly P. Hall knew. They've known about America and America being destroyed before America was created. This is the occultic knowledge that's been handed down from generations to generations within their secret society circles because they knew that through the building up of America and using America to defy the Most High God in every way inconceivable, every way imaginable that you could think of to go against the Most High God and to and for them to destroy for them to destroy America. Remember, the Phoenix bird destroys itself. So it's their goal to have created America only to destroy her. And remember, the Phoenix bird only lives for several hundred years. So you got to think back to when 
America was first so-called discovered. 1492, America, uh, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. So 500 years from that time, you're looking at um, 1992. Okay, but just it's somewhere within that vicinity. This is letting you know somewhere within that vicinity, they were looking for America to be a country for a time. They were going to destroy America and through America, they could rebirth, have a renewal, if not only the empire, because remember, the phoenix represents many things. It represents the empire, but it also represents the perfected man. So through the destruction of the currency is going to bring forth the mark of the beast. And through that mark of the beast, you're creating cyborgs out of people. You're turning people into something else, into abominations against the creation that the Most High God has created, which they would call the perfected man. And you're going to bring forth the perfected empire. This is the secret destiny of America. Okay? They know the Bible. They know what the Bible says about Babylon and the judgment upon Babylon. And they, and they feel like they're the ones that are gonna, that's going to bring it to pass. But I want to go into the scriptures now. And I want to show this in scripture. This cashless society we're living in. And this perfected empire, we've already talked, to the, talked about the perfected man in Revelation 13. They will take a mark, and through that mark, we'll be able to buy and sell, have the beast number in his head or forehead, in his, his forehead or hand. Okay. One moment here, just. Going to go through these scriptures. And I believe first I want to start in the book of Daniel. Let me get it here. Sorry, I, did, I didn't put all the scriptures together. I just kind of just now coming to me to go through some of these scriptures. So let's go to Daniel chapter 7. We'll go ahead and bring in Brother Shalom Noah Allah. And Brother Shalom Noah Allah, uh, Daniel 7 and 1, and start at verse... Start at verse 1 and read down to verse 3. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 1, and it reads, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream in vision of, of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the psalm of the matter. Verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So, so four great beasts, right, came up from the sea, one more diverse, or diverse one from another so who or what are these beasts i know a lot of you brothers and sisters know who these beasts are but we're going to show in scripture what when it talks about beasts what is a beast okay let's go down to verse Find it here, one moment. Let 
while I'm getting the next precept, reverse 17. Verse 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. All right, so these four beasts are four kings. So somebody would see that and think, oh, a king is a man. So that has to be talking about a man, but is it? Let's see. One moment. Let's see if these kings are actual men. Go to verse... Go to verse 23. Read that. Daniel chapter 7 verse 23. Thus he said, The four beasts shall be the four kingdoms upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. So the fourth beast shall be the what the fourth kingdom so when it says kings it's talking about empires or kingdoms and there are only four beasts this fourth beast is actually the beast spoken of in Revelation 13 when it talks about the mark of the beast it's talking about taking on the mark of this fourth kingdom All right, so that what comes out of this fourth kingdom? This fourth kingdom is the Roman Empire. But out of that Roman Empire would arise another kingdom. So let's go back up to verse... Let me get it here. Let's go back. Let's go back up to verse seven and read that. Daniel chapter seven, verse seven. After this, I saw in the night vision and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamp the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. It had ten horns. So the fourth beast has ten horns. We're going to talk about these ten horns. And when you read in um, Revelation 17, it talks about the ten horns. Let's let's read verse eight. Daniel chapter seven, verse eight. I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold. And this horn were eyes like the eyes of men, and a mouth speaking great things. So in, in, this, in these ten horns, Daniel said he considered the horns, meaning he's examining these horns, and he's, he's examining and analyzing these, what these horns are. And he's paying attention and watching out of these ten horns comes another little horn. Okay, so now let's... let's Take a look at what we're dealing with here. We have a fourth beast, which we know is a kingdom, which is the Roman Empire. The last king, the, the last beast to rule this earth before Christ comes back. And we know 
we're living in the end times and we know who's been in control and running this world since the Roman Empire. Okay, it's not hard to, to, to tell who's, who's running this world, who's in control. I think for a long time, you've heard many people, even songs made, that saying it's a white man's world. Okay, those are your Romans. But out of this fourth beast, you have ten horns. Okay, now, now during the ancient Roman Empire, it fell. And out of that empire, you had what sprang up? Ten horns, which are the ten European countries, which today we would call the European Union. So out of these ten European countries came what? Another little horn meaning another country and this other country plucked up three by the roots. Three, three horns were plucked up by the roots. These three horns, for those who don't know, of, of the European Union, Spain, Great Britain, and France, who helped found the little horn. They helped establish the little horn, America. And remember, this, this little horn had a mouth speaking great things. What great things? Blasphemies. Remember, the secret destiny of America would be America would be created to be this Luciferian phoenix bird to go against the Most High God destroy itself to be resurrected now there's more there's more in this chapter okay I want to just see exactly what I want to hit on here to show that this fourth kingdom So I don't, want, I don't want to go through it all, but I'm just trying to hit the certain points here to show, you know, when it, we talk about the phoenix, we talk about the caste of society, the collapse, the mark of the beast, all these things can be shown in the Bible. What else? Reverse, reverse 21. James chapter 7 verse 21. <clears throat> I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. So this little horn made war against the saints. America has been warring with the saints from the very beginning of its inception. We talk about the tribe of Gad. We talk about the Native American Indians. We talk about the, the, the tribes in the islands around America, Naphtali. You talk about Hawaii. You talk about Cuba, Manasseh. The Caribbean and, and, and uh, Puerto Rico, the Ephraimites. You talk about the slaves that came over to America, the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and, pre and prevailed against the saints because we went into captivity and fell under the curses. However, our captivity is coming to an end. And, wh and what happens? Reverse. Uh, Reverse 22. Daniel chapter 7, verse 22. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So the saints will prevail against not only the little horn, but also the ten horns and be given the kingdom but it will come through our savior our lord and savior whom the world calls jesus christ and the hebrew is Yeshua. read verse um, read verse 25 just had it here one moment read verse 25 
Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall give, shall be given to his hand unto a time and times in the dividing of times. Read on. But the judgment shall stick, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it until the end. Keep going. Verse 27, in the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So at the end of all of this, the fourth beast, along with the ten horns, will fall. And the kingdom, which a beast means kingdom, the beast will no longer have power in this earth as it will be cast into the lake of fire. And the kingdom, the spirit of rulership in this earth, in the kingdom will be given to the saints and they shall serve and obey Christ. That's the hymn. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2 now to show this also parallels with Daniel chapter 2. I mean, there's so much to be brought out, so we can't go through it all. But I'm just showing that at the end, you would have a fourth beast. And through this fourth beast, the Roman Empire would come America. They would create America. America would go against the Most High in total defiance and abominable workings, only to, to be destroyed. And through that, de that destruction, they feel like their new world order will rise. They will gain power in this earth and that their Lord, Lucifer, will sit on the throne of the Most High. That's what they believe. Start at Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. This is the book of Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. And it reads, Thou king, thou, O king, saw it, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the, and the form thereof was terrible. Read on. Verse 32. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thigh of brass. Verse 33. Verse 33. His legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay. So this image that we're seeing or that Daniel is seeing and describing is actually he's seeing the four beasts that rule. And through this, we actually get clear understanding and clarity that these four beasts are four kingdoms and what four kingdoms these beasts represent. Now, let's go down to verse... Because we see that the, the feet are of iron and part clay. So let's go down to verse 42. Restart at verse 42. Daniels chapter 2. Verse 42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Keep going. And whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Keep going. Verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the Most High higher, the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. 
and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So these ten toes that we're reading of here on this image are part iron, part miry clay. And there's so much in that that can be broken down as far as this particular kingdom. But what we can relate this to, just what, the, what I'm really trying to get to with the understanding here. These ten toes represent the ten horns. The ten horns will receive power back after America has been destroyed. After America has destroyed itself as the phoenix and rises, the, the, the EU will take power back, the ten horns, because they only created America for a time so that they could do what they needed to do with America. They could take the power back and get their empire back under the Roman Empire. Let's go to Revelation 17 to show this. In that Roman Empire, that uh, renewed Roman Empire, those ten toes will be destroyed, as it tells in verse 45. And a kingdom will be set up that shall stand forever. All kingdoms consumed. Verse 44 tells us that too in Daniel chapter 2. So let's talk about that event happening. We're going to get it in Revelation 17. John, while on the Isle of Patmos, seen the same thing Daniel saw. Daniel described it as ten toes in chapter 2. He described the ten horns in chapter 7. And now John is going to talk about those ten horns in Revelation 17. Read verse 12. Revelation chapter 17 verse 12. And it reads, And the ten horns which thou sawest are the ten kings, which have reject, received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So these ten horns, the same ten horns we read in Daniel chapter 7, which is the European Union, are ten kings. Now again, we know that that word kings can be synonymous with kingdoms or countries. Doesn't, doesn't mean a single person. So these ten horns are ten kings, countries, kingdoms. So the European Union, each of those countries that make up the European Union are their own country, which have received no kingdom as yet because the European Union hasn't ever ruled anything. When Rome fell, out of Rome came America. So they haven't received a kingdom yet, but they will receive power as an empire one hour with the beast. So right now, the European Union is ready to receive its power back from America. And they think that through the destruction of America, through the rise of the phoenix, that they win this. But let's see what the scriptures tell us. Read verse 14. Or actually, 13 and then 14. Revelation chapter 17, verse 13. These have one mind. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. And the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords. And king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen in faith. So it says these, talking about ten horns shall make war with the lamb that's the ten toes you see in, Re in uh, Daniel chapter 2 being broken and you also read about it in Daniel chapter 7 that fourth beast it talks about the saints receiving the kingdom so when it's so in, in Revelation 17 14 it says and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful okay so the saints are going to receive the next kingdom now before this war that the lamb has with the ten horns, what's going to have to happen first to the little horn? Let's read verse, let's read verse uh, 15 and 16. 
Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are the people in multitudes and nations and tongues. So when it talks about the whore. And the ten horns. One, one second. When it talks about the whore, it's talking about that little horn. This is that whore. And John called her the great whore. But Daniel saw it as a little horn. Read verse 16. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. And burn her with what? Burn her with fire. So this is the little horn, or the whore, or the phoenix, being burned. Before it's burned, it's made desolate and naked, because the EU is going to take back all power. It's going to destroy the dollar. And then once it's finished breaking America all the way down, it's then going to destroy America. So through America's re uh, sacrifice, the phoenix can be born and the ten horns can take their power back for one hour before Yeshia Christ comes back to destroy the ten horns. And that's the, what? Secret destiny of America that Manly P. Hall knows and many occultists knows going all the way back to Plato Plato had a vision during the times of the Grecian Empire of this place okay that would later be called America this new Atlantis First Atlantis fell, the second Atlantis is about to fall. First Babylon fell, the second Babylon is about to fall. First Egypt fell, second Egypt is about to fall. So whatever name you want to give America, it was described in many different names in the Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, Atlantis isn't in the Bible, but you know, there there are books that talk about the new Atlantis being America, and we know Atlantis fell before the flood during Noah's time. That's how Atlantis fell. Okay? So this, this is, to wrap it all up, brothers and sisters, this is where we're at when we talk about a caste society. They know they must bring forth the caste society to bring forth the mark of the beast. Okay? Through that currency being turned into the phoenix, burnt, destroying itself, you're going to bring forth a perfected man and, and cyborgs and a, 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 a total alteration to the Most High's creation. It'll be the devil's creation. And that's why no man who takes the mark of the beast can make it to the kingdom. Because you now become Satan's creation. And through the, the, the continued fall of America will come the eventual, eventual complete destruction of America. This is why they're egging uh, Iran on. Because they know through this war, Iran will help destroy America. It will help destroy the dollar. And then hence you have the phoenix destroying itself. Because the ten horns want their power back. They never, they never got the chance to be a kingdom. They sprung out of the Roman Empire when the Roman Empire fell. And, and, and they gave the power to America and built America up as that little horn. Now, there is one thing I want to add on to this. At the same time you're seeing all this about cashless society being called for by Bank of America CEO and these articles coming out about the economy and what's going on right now, right? When you take a look at movies, because I like to look at movies because movies
tell us so much, and they actually, in real time, line up with with news events and prophetic events. What movie just came out? Just came out that would line up with what we're talking about here tonight in the news. Can any any? Let me see if any brother or sister in the chat on YouTube can talk about what movie is out right now that we could look to that would go right in line with this topic tonight and what we brought out. Kaz D hit, hit the nail right on the head and I'm about to show y'all. Commenter number one, another one right on it. And I'm about to show y'all. I was waiting to see if y'all if y'all were with me here. Y'all were with me. It's it's about to it's about to come come through your screen. It's it's a little delay in um what I'm seeing on YouTube versus what what's going on here. It's probably about a ten to fifteen second delay. DJ Akawa, the Marvel movie. Okay. There's a lot of Marvel movies. I'm gonna give you benefit of the doubt and say that you are talking about Dark Phoenix. There it is. There it is. All right. So I wouldn't necessarily say the movie itself is bringing out necessarily you know what is coming out in tonight's conversation and tonight's you know broadcast but the title is very timely and we talk about the phoenix so i'm more so looking at that particular thing lining up and this is why as i'm doing the lesson i'm getting it ready to to go into it it it, it dawned on me like because i you know have known about this movie for a while, but I thought to myself, like, as I'm putting the, the, the Phoenix information together, it hit me like, man, Dark Phoenix did just come out. All right, so these things line up with their news, with prophecy, purposefully, because Hollywood is the wood, is the wood of a witch or a wizard. So they're letting us know through their magazines, like The Economist magazine, through their movies. They're letting us know. They're putting it right in our face. If we can decipher and see the glitches in the, in the matrix and, and, and tie all the loose ends together, connect all the dots, it's not coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Okay, so I wanted to make sure, because I almost forgot to bring that part out before we go into just some final news here. And before we wrap up this broadcast. So let me get the next piece of news. We've got a couple more articles here we're going to just go through pretty quickly. Because we are up against the clock when it talk about the you know the show and how long we want to do it for. Let's see here. But I'm I'm glad to see brothers and sisters are sharp when it comes to tying all this together and seeing it all come full circle. So let's go to the next article here. This comes off of ZeroHedge.com. It says, it's a scary picture. Midwest farming turmoil being compared to 2008 housing crisis. Remember earlier when we talked about 2008 and the recession? Notice how 2008 is being now brought up again, but this time being compared to the we talk about 
natural disasters happening. And, and right now what's going on is you have a major natural disaster when we talk about rain. It says the wettest year in memory conti continues to decimate corn crops across the Midwest. So right now you have the wettest 12 months in the last 125 years of America. The wettest 12 months. It's, I mean, it's rained and rained and rained to where now, look at this image here. You cannot grow crops in this condition. This is a plague. We talked about the plagues on Babylon. It says, and it's not just farmers that are being bearing the brunt of the flooding. It's the entire agricultural economy. Those that pro provide supplies like seeds, fertilizers, equipment, and services are also struggling. For example, BBC reports that at Burris Seeds in Arensville, Illinois, employ employees spend as much time trying to lift farmer spirits as they do selling to them. Okay. All the seeds are coming back. That's lost revenue for us. Here's a map showing you the the uh, above flood feet level in certain areas. How many areas across this particular Midwest area where that it's really raining a lot, where you get all of your crops in the above flood area in these particular areas. Okay, so what happens when we have things like corn farmers face unprecedented headwinds this year, included record rain that has flooded the Midwest and stalled co corn plantings? So what does this mean? What does this mean when you have all this rain and flooding going on in the areas where a lot of agricultural, a lot of produce comes out of? Is that, will that not cause a famine? Will that not also put a strain on the economy when you talk about revenues lost, jobs lost, going back, going right, fitting into the cashless society and the collapse? What else? Let's go to the next article. And this will be the last article. ZeroHedge.com. Will 2019 be the year that changes everything? June 27, 2019. Negotiations with Iran are over before they could even take place. After President Trump and Iranian leadership exchanged more insults on Tuesday, the Iranians declared that the channel of diplomacy is now closed forever. Of course, anything is possible in the future, but for now, it appears that any possibility of a diplomatic solution is completely dead. And the clock is ticking because two exceedingly important deadlines are coming up within the next two weeks. President Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu have both made it incredibly clear that they do not want Iran to possess nuclear weapons. And Iran's nuclear program is about to pass a critical threshold. So at the, ta at the same time that America has backed out of the deal with Iran. Iran is saying it's going to continue enriching uranium, which we know uranium can be used to make a nuclear bomb. So it's almost pushing Iran into the place to be able to have the capability to make a nuclear weapon. Diplomatic negotiations were the only alternative to military action and now it seems that military action is the only option left on the table that means that we could literally be counting down the days before missiles start flying back and forth and it will be a war that is far more terrible than we are being told by the mainstream media and yes it is a war far more terrible than the mainstream media is talking about because whenever you bring out second address 15 which we talked about last week in last week's stream, and you read that war, okay? 
it's going to be a terrible war because we, as we just read about America's destruction as that phoenix, this, this war will bring about America's final judgment. Iran and the Ten Horns together at the end of this war and coming to get America. The Trump administration seems to believe that the new economic sanctions that just hit Iran will, with, will alter the situation, but the truth is they aren't going to really add much of anything to the economic sanctions that were previously imposed. In response to these new sanctions, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani accused President Trump of suffering from mental retardation. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani blasted the sanctions against Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, as outrageous and idiotic, noting the 80-year-old Shiite cleric has no plans to ever travel to the USA. In remarks broadcast on Iranian state television, Rouhani said the White House suffers from mental retardation. Yeah, because you'd have to think. America is committing suicide with this war. America would be bringing forth its demise and trying to go to war with Iran. And when we know Bible prophecy and we know what we've talked about tonight as this phoenix being representative of America, Manly P. Hall's book, The Secret Destiny of America, it's not mental retardation. It's a plan to destroy America. It's their plan. So they, they may make you think that they are dumb and retarded about what they're doing and that nobody in the White House knows what they're doing or previous administrations are dumb, the Bush administration, how dumb could they be, Obama, Clinton, so on and so forth. No. They're actors. There's an agenda that's been in play from the beginning and that's the destruction of America to build her up only to, to, to bring her down and destroy her. And not only that, but even history tells you all empires rise and fall. Daniel chapter 7, the four beasts. The three beasts before the fourth one rose and fell. So why would America not suffer the same? Why would, why would anybody believe America would go on forever? Okay. So no, it's, it's not mental retardation. It's a calculated plan. And they want you to think that they're, they had to be retarded. Because it, it, it's, it's asinine. It's insane. It makes no sense. That how, you know, why would somebody be this dumb to, to do this? Needless to say, President Trump was not amused by this. He subsequently went on Twitter and threatened that any sort of attack on anything American will be met with great and overwhelming force. Iran's very ignorant and insulting statement put out today only shows that they do not understand reality. Any attack by Iran on anything American will be met with great and overwhelming force. In some areas, overwhelming will mean obliteration. No more John Kerry and Obama. Okay, so what's a circus show, folks? That's all it is, is a circus show. And those who get caught up in the circus are only setting themselves up to be deceived get caught up in the scriptures and understand what the scriptures say are going to happen. Or you get caught up in the shenanigans. It says that is quite a vague red line that President Trump has now established and it means that it isn't going to take very much at all to start a war between the United States and Iran. When the press later asked Trump about a potential exit strategy if war, if war with Iran does erupt, Trump responded by saying, I don't need exit strategies. Trump returned to the subject of Iran during an event in the Oval Office on Tuesday, reiterating his commitment that his administration would not allow Tehran to obtain nuclear weapons. Asked whether he had an exit strategy should a conflict arise with Iran, the president responded, I don't need exit strategies. So let's do the math here for a second. America's been in the longest war it's ever been in in Afghanistan. Okay, can't win that war. Can't win the war in Iraq, which has been just, just as long. Can't win the war in Syria, but yet they're going to win a war against Iran. 
Okay. When's the last time America won a war? All right. So, no. This is this is all smoke and mirrors. This is to get the American people in the mindset of being comfortable. America is still the big bad kid on the block. Nobody wants to mess with. We can obliterate a country, you know, blow it into the Stone Age. Get them to be patriotic. Okay, it's 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 to put you in a delusion, delusional state of mind. So you'll continue working as a slave to bring forth the Phoenix agenda, the dark Phoenix agenda of America. It says here, so what does that, ex what does that mean exactly? Is he saying that an exit strategy wouldn't be necessary because Iran would be bombed off the map? When President Trump called off the airstrike against Iran at the last minute and talked about the potential for negotiations, many were hopeful that a peaceful solution could be achieved. But if you are seeking to negotiate with someone, it is probably not a good idea to slap the foreign minister from the other country with personal economic sanctions. For the Iranians, this was apparently, uh, apparently the final straw. You say you really want to hold talks with us, but at the same time, you're saying that you want to boycott and sanction our foreign minister. So you're lying, Rouhani said. A a Iranian foreign minister spokesman Abbas Mousavi said on Twitter that the latest sanctions result in closing the channel of, of diplomacy forever, according to Iranian state-run television press TV. So these sanctions, Iran, Iran was saying at one point we would have went to the table in diplomatic terms and discussed some, try to, try to discuss some negotiations. But if these sanctions will close that channel off forever, we'll never entertain that idea ever again. It says here, not that negotiations with the Iranians would have yielded anything anyway, but we must find some way to avoid World War III because a war with Iran would unleash global chaos that the U.S. is simply not prepared to handle. And they know this. Hence the Phoenix, right? Unfortunately, President Trump is currently surrounded by war hawks. And he appears to be completely convinced that he does not need congressional approval before going to war with Iran. So they want to try to blame Bolton and Pompeo and these guys that are around Trump. But Trump put these guys in. So you can't blame them if Trump hired these guys. And not only that, but these guys don't have any power. Okay? These guys are just actors that act out the script. They're being controlled by the hidden hand. The Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain that you would never see. And they'll make you think that they're Democrat versus Republican. When they're all Freemasons. All together, bringing forth one satanic, Luciferian agenda. During a portion of an interview with Hill TV released on Monday, President Trump said he doesn't need approval from Congress before launching strikes against Iran. So here it is. In order for America to go to war, they have to get congressional approval. Trump saying he don't need approval. And he's right, he don't. Bush didn't. Obama didn't. Why would Trump? And with the wars that those presidents started. Trump said, I like the idea of keeping Congress abreast, but I wouldn't have to do that. Actually, the U.S. Constitution is very clear on the matter. Just because the Constitution has been ignored by previous presidents does not mean that it is not binding. And there is a move in Congress right now that could potentially stop a war with Iran. Surprisingly, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says that he may actually allow a vote on a bipartisan, bipartisan amendment that would block funding for military action against Iran. So this is where, where people and you know, brothers and sisters can't get caught up in this. To think, oh, you know, they can stop the war. You can't stop the war. It's already been prophesied it's going to happen. This is for the American sheeple. That's what this is for. Because Mitch McConnell is a, is a Freemason. Okay? It, w I w it wouldn't surprise me if him and Trump weren't having dinner last night with the rest of these senators and representatives. So I'm, I'm going to skip over this. Okay, let's see here. Finishing out. 
says, of course, Trump could just veto anything that gets pushed through Congress, and there, and there would not be enough votes to override his veto. However, the Constitution still says that President Trump must get congressional approval before going to war. Nothing is going to change that. If Trump chooses to disregard the Constitution and go to war anyway, it will be one of the worst decisions of his presidency so far. And as I mentioned earlier, the clock is ticking. As Harats has noted, two exceedingly important dead, deadlines are coming up within the next two weeks. Iran announced in mid-June that by the 27th of the month, it will exceed the uranium stockpile limit by Tehran's nuclear deal with world powers, pushing tensions with the U.S. into uncharted territory and potentially dangerous territory. The June 27th deadline comes ahead of another July 7th, the deadline for Europe to come up with the better terms for Iran to stay in the accord. So here comes the EU. So pay attention to the EU, which is the Ten Horns, in their relationship with the Medes or Iran. If that second deadline passes without any action, Iranian President Hussein Rouhani says the Islamic Republic likely will resume higher uranium enrichment, a move that would breach the terms of a nuclear pact with world powers. A war with Iran could potentially start as soon as next month, and right now Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is in the Middle East as he seeks to build a global coalition against Iran. The following comes from a transcript of remarks that Pompeo made to the press on Sunday just before he left on his trip. It says here, I'm heading out today. Our first stops will be in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the UAE, two great allies in the challenge that Iran presents, and we'll be talking with them about how to make sure that we are all strategically aligned and how we can build out a global coalition a coalition not only throughout the gulf states but in asia and in europe that understands this challenge and that is prepared to push back against the world's largest state sponsor of terror so here it is iran hasn't attacked the country in over 200 years is within its own within its own region America is halfway across the country, outside of its region, setting up military bases all around Iran, starting wars everywhere across the planet, but yet Iran is the biggest state sponsor of terror. Okay, so it's mind control. A lot of people are under mind control. Some people out there are awake, but they're not going to say anything until it's too late. It says here, when the U.S. starts to put together a global coalition, I think we all know what that means. War is coming, and it could have apocalyptic consequences. I have never been more concerned about a war with Iran than I am right now. The Ar Iranians have restarted their nuclear program, and the U.S. and Israel have both made it abundantly clear that they will take military action before the Iranians get too much farther. At this point, a peaceful solution appears to be out of the question, and so all of us should start preparing for the most terrifying war that the Middle East has seen since the days of World War II. Okay. All right, so that is the news, current events, and the Bible prophecy for tonight and um, I'm glad to have been able to be here to bring forth this information and to warn our brothers and sisters out there to continue to build in the body of Christ to con continue to gather to those of like minds to continue to prepare yourself spiritually and mentally first and foremost along with preparing yourself physically for the things that are to come because you know Christ told us in Mark chapter 13 that he cometh as a thief in the night and those who aren't prepared it, it will be caught sleep so don't be a brother or a sister that gets caught sleep in these times sleep in sin sleep in ignorance Sleep in slothfulness. Okay, there's a lot of different ways a person could be asleep. Okay, you may be conscious to the understanding of the Bible and these prophecies, but you could be 
sleep when it comes to righteousness and not being in line with keeping the commandments and being obedient to the Father's will. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let me get ready for segment two. We're going to go to the call lines. I'm going to take your calls. I'm going to read the message board. I'm pretty sure brothers and sisters have been saying a lot with tonight's topic, so I would love to read these comments. And when we come back, we're going to, going to see you know, what calls we have to take. Again, the guest call-in number is 515-605-9327. If you'd like to speak, you have about 15 minutes to call in before that line gets cut off and go into overtime. But should you call that number, you, li you would like to speak, you can simply press the number one. You will take your call. Okay. And um, just one moment here. All right, so you're listening to Friday Night Sabbath coming out of Babylon here for the Gathering of Christ Church. And we'll be right back. The elders of the Gathering of Christ Church would like to invite you to enroll in the new upcoming Hebrew and Bible Academy, which begins December 23rd. The Academy is a three-month online course which includes 12 live biblical lessons taught by the elders every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We deliver weekly analyzed news with Elder Rekha and Deacon Shapat with commentary on how it relates to Bible prophecy. Elder Rekha insightfully teaches each online Bible lesson in a personal classroom setting to enrich your learning experience. Additionally, Elder Loya provides an introduction to the original Hebrew language, including grammar and conversational Hebrew. For new and returning students, now is a great time to enroll, as we are happy to announce that we have added never-before-taught lessons on Daniel 9, the prophecy of the final seven years, the battle of Armageddon, and the 1,000-year reign. This intensive course has been meticulously customized and enriched with PDF booklets and downloadable videos, automatically emailed to you after every live lesson. Enroll today at HistoryTimes.org or email us at GatheringAs1 at AOL.com. We look forward to seeing you there.
write a pretty little song, but one day you will One day you'll spread your wings and fly away So far away, I know your pain and I know you're tired Too weak to fly, redemption is nice So look to the sky, my love Yeah, hold your head and dry your eyes And sing your song and shine your light In dark places, this cage is not your home You're meant to be free to fly Shabbat Shalom, we are back. We're about to go into the final segment of tonight's broadcast, which is going to the call lines, as well as looking at the message board, seeing what you brothers and sisters have to say tonight. But before we do, I want to just quickly share with brothers and sisters the Gathering of Christ Church website, if you are not familiar with it, WWE www.gatheringofchrist.org where you can come and you can sign up for the Bible in Hebrew Academy the Hebrew and Bible Academy which just started last week so you still have time to enroll and, and catch up with week one going into week two this Sunday okay you also can get your Bible in Hebrew uh, uh, the Hebrew calendar Okay. And you also have the I Am Apparel, which is the Gathering of Christ Church official clothing line. You can get the clothing here on the website. You also have the um, GOC Network, where you have several businesses where brothers and sisters have their own products, services, etc. You can come here. Help brothers and sisters help build your community, 
stop giving to the beast and building the beast system. If you yourself would like to be part of the GOC network, you can always send an email. As you can see here, gocc.net at aol.com. So this is your one-stop shop for the church. And it's a community. Okay, we're building our community. Okay, and we're building our church. All right, we have a couple minutes before we go into overtime. So one last time, let me tell you, the guest call number is 515-605-9327. And if you have a comment or question, press the number one. We will take your call. So let me see if we have any callers in the call queue. Okay, I don't see any callers at the moment. If you're in, you'd like to speak, press one. I'm going to go back over here to the message board. I was actually reading some of the um, comments here. I saw people talking about Nipsey Hussle being Ethiopian or a Hamite. That is true. He was, he was, you know, you're looking at Kush, you're looking at Arab, you're looking at Esau or Edom. You have a lot of different components to his genealogy, but what we do know is that he was not an Israelite. 90 seconds. He was a plant. The same way he married uh, a, a Jewish agent and plant in our community in um, Lower London. Laura London is not an Israelite. She also is Jewish. Okay, so these are people they're putting in our communities to represent us, but they're actually there for our demise. Let's see what else the people are talking about. 60 seconds. Chosen one by the Most High says, we've been in a recession since the middle class became obsolete. Also, birth, uh, Chosen One says, birth pains of a nation to emerge. Absolutely, birth of a nation. That is true, LaVonna Brown. They're, they're bringing out more truth so that us that are the elect cannot be deceived because we can see through the lies 10 seconds and we can make out what the truth is Let's see here. And that's exactly what it will be cast D Phoenix will be America dying and Rome emerging. Ancient Roman Empire coming back to the forefront. It looks like uh, Lavana Brown was already on the new X-Men movie, which is based on the Phoenix before I had a chance to bring it out myself but again brothers and sisters are very sharp in this church and that uh, listening in on this broadcast Dark Phoenix movie just came out. It's only a few weeks old. But it's dropping at the same time. And it didn't even come to my mind when I was putting, I was looking at the headlines and I was putting this, I, I remember the Economist cover and I seen the Phoenix there and I wasn't even thinking about the movie until maybe late in my um, putting this information together.
still, re still reading here. Let me see if there's any uh, callers. Still no callers in blog talk, so I'm just reading. I'm just reading through the messages. It's a lot y'all are saying. That is right, Lavonna Brown. The Phoenix is on the back of the dollar bill. That's a Phoenix. Again, in Freemasonry, symbols have multiple meanings. So whereas you may see an eagle, the occult or the esoteric, the hidden ones see a phoenix and know it's a phoenix. And there was a phoenix first. Dawada Yasharala says they just erected this Nebuchadnezzar statue in Sin City, Las Vegas. That's interesting. I'll have to look, look that up. Randy Butler, you're looking for the, uh, the Dallas body to gather? Send an email to gocctexas at ymail.com. That's g-o-c-c-t-e-x-a-s at ymail.com. And that way somebody can contact you about uh, gathering with the Dallas body. Or you can always send an email to gathering is one at aol.com. Lions W says, what is Russia's play in prophecy? Are they going against the whore as well? Yes, Russia will, is part of the ten horns. They're Esau. They will also use those nuclear weapons they have against America as well.
Officer Heyman said something very interesting. They're going to put a witch in the presidential demonic seat before they toast his corporation. You know, that's, that's an interesting concept with the fact of the Simpsons show Lisa Simpson, who was a woman, as the president of the United States after Trump. So it would be fitting America in its, you know, down state because of Trump. So at the last term, why not have your first female president? And then once things really start get destroyed, you can then say, okay, well, we put a woman in. We never should have put a woman in. So it was like, okay, first we put Trump in. He did what he did, made it, you know, bad. Now, that you know, we put a woman in, and then she was like the nail in the coffin. So I can see that possibly happen. But right now, I'm looking at Trump, head, head, you know, riding off into the sunset as the... As the the scapegoat that just single-handedly destroyed America. That's the narrative that they'll paint. When America's history is written, we will have, uh, you know, Trump is the lone man that single-handedly dismantled and destroyed America with his uh, actions. So we have a caller here that would like to speak. Let me go ahead and go over to the call lines real quick. From the 337 area code, we have Brother Reggie with a question. Brother Reggie, Shabbat Shalom, you're on the air. Shabbat Shalom, how are you? I'm blessed by the best. How about yourself? Oh, blessed by the best. Um, my question was, what does China have have to do with... um? With prophecy being that they are an ally of Iran? That's a good question. Um, when you look at China, you're talking about Japheth. And you talk about Iran, you're talking about Japheth. So they're both sons and daughters of Japheth. So they're the same people as far as from the Japhetic lineages. So when you read in the scriptures, it talks about putting the hooks into the, the jaws of Gog and Magog that's the Japhetic people so you look at Iran being provoked in the war you look at China being provoked in the war they're not warlike people so the Most High is going to put hooks in their jaws and pull them into this war uh, that's going to happen in the Middle East and that'll be their part in it and then you look at China having as America's uh, empire is collapsing and being destroyed it'll be like China's will be right there being destroyed almost simultaneously to America's when you read 2nd Edges 15 God, God, Elder. okay thank you that's all I had okay the water and bless you Shabbat Shalom okay let me go back over here to the Callers here. Sean Roseman said, oh, that's why the Ten Horns EU is still trading with Iran, so they'll help with Melt Babylon. Exactly. Pay very close attention to the relationship between Europe and Iran. It's been happening for a while now. While America backed out of the Iranian nuclear deal, Europe didn't. And Europe was saying that they wanted to stay in the deal. And Trump was saying that America will put sanctions on Europe, too, or anybody else that does business with Iran. So what that's doing now is setting America at odds or a, a, a rift, a deepening rift with their relationships with Europe. So when it's all said and done, Europe will no longer be an ally to America, but will then come against America. That's the script. That's the script the whole time. So Europe is not against America. Europe is with America, but they're all for the Phoenix being destroyed and destroying the Phoenix. 
So that's what's at work here. They're just, it's, it's, it's a, the world is a stage. And everything we're seeing is theater, political theater, to deceive the masses. But the Bible makes it clear. That's why when you read the Bible and understand the Bible, the mysteries become clear. So when you watch the news, you know exactly what's going on. Regardless of what they're talking about, you can see what's really going on. Exactly. Exactly. Sean Roseman says a Dark Phoenix character in the movie was played by a woman as in America said a queen and am no widow, the harlot. Exactly. Jesse Midyet says, so let's say Trump starts this war. What's next? Will it be time to count our blessings and leave our beloved our loved ones behind? What sacrifices should I be ready to make? Well, that's definitely a loaded question. I would say make sure that you are linked into a church in your local area and be in building with a church. So that way, when those times come, you'll be instructed and guided through the he goats or the leaders to lead you. And wisdom and understanding along with the Holy Spirit being connected to the Holy Spirit through righteousness so you can be led out of Babylon, however that happens. But yes, you know, remember Lot's wife. You talk about loved ones. It could be anybody from your spouse to your, 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 your parents, to your children, to your brother, your sister, your friends. This is the time of betrayal. So it could be the person whom you think you're closest with, even in the church, that could betray you. And, and, and for whatever reasons, look at, look at Christ whenever... You know, he was finally turned in. Everybody betrayed him. Peter, the disciples, we know what Judas did, right? So the servant isn't, is, isn't greater than his master. So be ready and prepared for the betrayal. But you will stand before the throne of judgment to account for what you've done. And just know that America, there will be no rapture. There will be no UFO departures out of here. So be looking for your escape should you be here when things go down. Who knows where you'll be, but should you be here when things go down, don't panic. Be led by the Holy Spirit. And know that the dead in Christ will rise first no matter where they're at, whether they're in America when they pass or they're someplace else when they pass. Nothing's guaranteed because you make it out of America that you won't die someplace else or that you'll make it because you made it out of America. Like that's, Making out of America is not a, a uh, entrance into the, into the kingdom. Okay, and, and I think a lot of people have made it. That, that's their, their foremost priority, making out of America first and foremost before they do anything else. And they, they failed and fallen in, in that ideology. Yes, LaVonna Brown, America will be the scapegoat. America will be that scapegoat that takes the fall, the fall guy. And that way Rome can then take the power back, which was operating, Rome was operating the whole time anyway. It's Rome operating the whole time. They're, they're, the, they're, they're the Wizard of Oz. They're the ones behind the curtain controlling everything. Yeah, Russia, Russia is Esau. The reason why Christian pastors say that Russia is Gog or Magog is because when you look at those lands that Russia is in, originally those were Japhetic lands. But you can't look at the landmass. A landmass does not depict a person's nationality. So when it says Gog and Magog, it's not talking about the land of Gog and Magog. It's talking about the people. So you have to look at who the Russians are. The Russians are Edomites. They're Idumians. They're not Japhetic people. So we're a little bit over three hours on the broadcast, so I'm going to go ahead and um, wrap things up, but I uh, want to once again thank everybody 
for your participation in tonight's broadcast and I hope that brothers and sisters are getting themselves ready and prepared for the great war that's on, on the horizon. We're already in the war now, but getting ready and prepared for the great war that's coming. And um, be the most high's will. We'll look to have another broadcast next week. Until then, brothers and sisters, stay blessed. Stay sober. Stay vigilant. We shall see Zion soon. And Kwam Yasharala. In me, I feel the weight on both sides. Wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove is how I try to be. Every single place I stroll by, I just wanna win a bunch of souls for the Most High. Win a bunch of souls for the Most Father High. Have mercy, don't ever desert me. I'm just a lost soul. Show me 
thy ways Father, it's urgent Just make me a servant So I can serve you the rest of my days Father, have mercy Don't never desert me I'm just a lost soul Show me thy ways Father, it's urgent Just make me a servant So I can serve you the rest of my days I'm praying to the men upstairs That's what I used to call them So many tears on my face is like Niagara falling More facelifts than Kim K More scars than Tina Fey And I know I'm on the bunch All because of curses Can't be selfish when I pray Gotta extend my hand I even pray for Kendrick Lamar Give him a chance Cause it's so hard when you need deep And call the sinner man I'm only speaking from experience It's been long, it's been long It's been long, it's been, long, it's been a long time coming I thank you for not putting me on trial Giving me my wife and my child Blessing me to come back around Cause I was so dirty I know I'm not worthy My faith will little shaky Can you please make it sturdy I'm walking on eggshells And my flesh is so thirsty And you can bring a horse to a water But you can't make them drink Bring knowledge to your partners But you can't make them think No longer believe in religion It's a man-made thing I how you gave us commandments Through Christ who made clean Could have been dead a while back But he winked Father have mercy Don't ever desert me I'm just a lost so show me thy ways Father, it's searching Just make me a servant So I can serve you the rest of my days Father, have mercy Don't ever desert me I'm just a lost soul Show me thy ways Father, it's searching Just make me a servant So I can serve you the rest of my days